And joining me now is retired NASA astronaut Leroy Chow, who is also a former commander of the International Space Station. Hi, Leroy. So even though this flight is unmanned, what makes it so important? Why should people watching right now care about this? Well, it's always exciting when there's a launch of a new vehicle, and this has been a long time coming. Uh, this rocket is actually has more thrust, generates more thrust at liftoff than the Saturn V moon rockets, although it carries a little less payload to orbit. But nonetheless, it's an exciting thing. It's been a long time coming. The first iteration of this program, if you will, was around 2004, 2005 got redesigned by uh, uh, the Obama administration in part because of the uh, the uh, committee that I was a part of, the review of human, U.S. Human Spaceflight Plans Committee in 08, 09. And so this rocket has been in development since 10, 2010. And finally, here we are, 2022, getting ready for its maiden flight. So getting back to the moon is, you know, we haven't been there for almost 50 years since Apollo 17 back in 1972. So this is very exciting. It's, it's a stepping stone to Mars, if you will, to develop and test all of our hardware we're gonna to use to train astronauts, as well as all the scientific objectives of going back to the moon. Why do you think it's taken so long to get to this point, to, to, to go back to the moon? Part of the reason is, you know, most large organizations, and NASA's not immune from this, nor the contractors that, that uh, design and build the spacecraft, as they grow bigger and larger, they grow a little more bureaucratic, a little less efficient. And so unfortunately it's taken, it's taken longer and you know, a lot more money than it would have in the past. So for reference, uh, the Apollo program, I mean, the NASA was created in 1958, in 1969, less, just somewhat less than 11 years later, we landed the first humans on the moon. This program in one iteration or another has been going since 2004, 2005. So, you know, that's that's kind of just a reference point. But we are here now, and so the the launch is exciting. It certainly costs a lot more than uh, most of us thought it would. It's taken a lot longer than most of us thought it would, but at least we're, we're here now. I want to turn to something else in space, black holes. That's always an interesting topic, right? Black holes. Earlier this week, NASA sure. posted a short clip of what one sounds like. Let's listen. literally sounds like my worst nightmare. I don't know. I don't know. Like, that's a very ominous sound there, Leroy. What did we just hear? Well, this is obviously synthetic because, uh, you know, you need you need a medium for sound to travel through like the air. And so in the vacuum of space, there would be no sound, if you will, to travel through. So this is a, a synthetic, an estimation of if there's some pressure near a black hole, what this might sound like. Pretty eerie, though you know, based on this estimation. But, uh, you know, if you got that close to a black hole, I think you'd have bigger problems to worry about. Yeah, that's a fair point. All right, so this week, NASA also released new images from the James Webb Telescope taken of Jupiter. They are stunning, but it's not the red and brown planet we're used to seeing. What's going on here? Help us better understand this. So James Webb is like by far the most sensitive instrument we've launched into space. And it's unique in that the mirrors are cooled by cryogenics to a very, very low temperature. And what that enables it to do is to look back at um, objects in the infrared spectrum. And that's one reason why it's placed where it is, away from the Earth, away from the sun, pointed away from these objects so that the heat from the Earth and the sun don't interfere. So it's able to give us more insight into exoplanets, uh, places in our own solar system like Jupiter, as you point out, and also look almost to the edge of the Big Bang, almost you know 13.8 billion year, uh, light years away, which is pretty incredible. And so what you're you're seeing in these clear images of Jupiter have never been seen before. And the coloration, of course, is, is artificial. It's, it's been generated to create the contrast that we need, but they're spectacular nonetheless. Uh, a lot of information coming back, as you pointed out, uh, in making discoveries already. He already identified carbon dioxide in one of the exoplanet uh, atmospheres. So really exciting stuff. And I expect more to come from the years of operation of James Webb. All right, Leroy Chow, always great to have you on. Thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you. And you were in the seat.